At Scott St Margaret's practice in southwest London... We're going to go see the vet. Yeah. A rare Sphinx cat is about to make a grand entrance with his owner, Marie. Hello! Hi, Marie. How are you? Oh, I'm at my wit's end, honestly. <gasps> OK, what's going on with she, Banu? Banu is in season and she's <gasps> driving me crazy. She's been um, slightly amorous with my husband, Tim. <gasps> what's she doing? She's um, rubbing her bottom all over him. And then, just to get him in the mood, she nibbles his ear. I feel like I've walked in on a bit of a girly chat here. <laughs> We're just talking about my amorous cat. Oh, right. <laughs> like you do. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> OK, come on in, Marie. <laughs> Banu is an incredible-looking cat. She's a sphinx cat, which naturally have no hair. They've got big eyes. They look a little bit like aliens. And she is really quite unhappy. It is hilarious as she tries to mount my husband. Wow. And nibble on his ears. Oh, she's trying to nibble on me as we And, speak. Um, you know, she does favour, apart from you, unfortunately, she does favour the males at this time of the okay, month. Okay, and when you say favour, what are we talking? Rubbing her bottom on him right. and um, nibbling his ears. Wow, it's quite intimate, isn't it? It is. Well, let's get you out and have a little look at you. No, no, you're fine. Hey, shall we pour you out? Hey, because you're a very emotional little lady at the moment, aren't you? There, there you go. go. Oh, wow. There She's an amazing go. looking cat, isn't she? Banu is a really affectionate cat. She's so loving most of the time. Let's have a look at you. Okay. I know. Oh, dear. You are really in a mood today, aren't you? Dear me. I think Scott's a bit scared. I'm not going to lie. Oh, hey. I love you, but I hate you. <laughs> I think he's um, slightly petrified of Banu. When they can't enact their natural behaviours, they're going to get frustrated. Yeah. All right, baby. I don't know whether she's in pain or not. I don't really understand it. But basically, what we have to do is we have to lock her in the bathroom with her litter, her cat food and her bed, and it's the only place that she'll calm down. Spaying will relieve Banu's torment, but first Scott must check if the frisky feline is healthy enough to undergo a general anaesthetic. Normally when listening to animals' hearts, what we can hear in a healthy animal is love-dub, love-dub, love-dub. Mm. All right, sweetheart. In the case of Banu, what I can hear is a small flutter, a little, a little tiny sound, and that is not normal. It looks like her hormonal endeavours are going to have to continue for a little while because um, I can hear a heart murmur. Oh. Which would suggest that part of her heart is abnormal. Oh. Heart murmurs really aren't very common in cats. It's like a ticking time bomb. One day they can be fine and the next day they can be near death. Oh. But what also is a concern here is that, of course, to spay her, we need to give her an anaesthetic. And an anaesthetic in a cat with a heart murmur is very risky indeed. It increases the risk dramatically. OK. So, unfortunately for now, <coughs> you and your husband have to deal with that moody behaviour <laughs> for a little yeah. longer. Oh. Banu will now need to go to Scott's referral hospital, the Royal Veterinary College, for a heart scan. If they find at the Royal Veterinary College that she has an abnormality in the heart that's significant, then surgery may be the only option to allow Banu to live a normal, healthy life. So Marie has got a very difficult and tricky time ahead of her. I'm pretty upset, considering that Banu can actually die from this. It's you know, I came in laughing this morning and now I'm leaving really, really worried. Oh, it's OK, Banu. We're going to get you sorted, OK? <laughs> Come on in. Should we take you to see Joe? And sort that little tooth out. Next day, one of Scott's student nurses, Jess, arrives at the St Margaret's practice with her pint-sized pooch. Hi, Jess. Hello, Hi, Jess. guys. Hi. Hello. Hello. Vet Joe and receptionist Hello. Al are on duty and very happy to there. see Poppy. It's quite chilly. But this is not a social visit. 
Well, Bobby's actually here because after playing with Kimber earlier, I've noticed I think she's got a wobbly tooth. Oh, Pops! It's really awful to see Poppy in pain with her tooth, so I want to make sure that we can get it sorted as soon as possible. She's definitely not herself. Which tooth is it? Let me have a look. This could be a little embarrassing for Joe because the culprit, Kimber, just happens to be her own dog. Oh, is it that fun one? Yeah. Oh, come on in, let's have a closer look. Okay. Kimber and Poppy have been great friends ever since Joe joined Scott's practices two years ago and constantly meet up for playdates in the park. <laughs> she's, she's, oh, she's gone that way. <laughs> I'm shocked when Jess tells me that Poppy's damaged her tooth and even more so when I hear that Kimber may have done it when she was playing with her. Oh, that looks really wobbly. Oh, Jess, I'm afraid that tooth is going to have to come out. Oh, no. Hey, Bobby. A tooth that wobbly, I can't really consider leaving in because it's got a big pocket around the tooth already, and that will just fill up with bacteria. It'll continue to wobble and cause pain and discomfort. In the end, it will fall out anyway, but there's a risk of getting an infection up there that's quite high if you leave a tooth that's that wobbly. Oh, you're going to have me really worried. Do you want to do the anaesthetic? I think I will. Yeah, Mummy be there when you wake up. I'm quite worried about Poppy and the anaesthetic. With anaesthetics before, we've had, you know, dogs' hearts will stop or they'll stop breathing. There's always those risks, those things can happen. I'd really like to be there, so I'd make sure she's OK, because she means a lot to me. I'll give you first-class treatment, Pops. Today I'm on the road to Yorkshire, one of the most beautiful places in Northern England, to meet an extraordinary teenager. This passionate animal activist is taking on some of the biggest names in business and winning. And today I'm going to lend a hand with the amazing work she does. Hello, girls. From her home in Sheffield, 170 miles north of London, 15-year-old Lucy Gavahan has managed to shoot to fame with a remarkable campaign. Good girl, come on. This teenager's mission is to stop the practice of hens being kept in small cages for commercial egg production and make sure they lead a free-range life like these lucky girls. The hens really need a voice because they can't talk, they can't ask not to be caged. And the public can't see them in the cages because they can't see the farms. All they see is a box of eggs on a shelf. And if a dog was in a cage, there would be uproar. In an incredible coup this year, Lucy managed to convince several of the UK's biggest supermarkets to gradually phase out the sale of caged hen eggs. That was such amazing news to hear. So that's why I'm now petitioning the government to try and end caged hen farming as a whole. Hi there, Lucy. Hello. How are you? Good to I'm see good, you. thank you. Hello, and who's this beautiful little girl? This is Fern. And this is Sylvia. Hello, Sylvia. You're looking very Sylvia. healthy. I'm going to I'll let you in on a little cultural secret. As in Australia, we actually call them chooks. Oh. So, yeah, if I, if I use the word chook, then uh, don't look at me funny. <laughs> but one thing I always love is the fact that uh, chicken lovers tend to call them girls, don't they? Like, they're, they're girls. Yes, like, yeah, they they're, are they're girls. Part of the girl power, part of the team. Absolutely. For her part, Lucy has adopted six rescue chickens and is hoping her campaign will encourage thousands of people to do the same. Actually today, Phoenix Hen Rescue, where all these girls came from, they're having an intake of 40 rescue hens. Wow, 40? 40. So if you wouldn't mind, it would be amazing if you would come and help check them and make sure they're all well on their way to a happy new life. Oh, I'd love to. Sylvia, you going to come? <laughs> it's... Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about oh. that. Oh. Made me very wet. And she's still going. <laughs> hey. Oh, that's not what you want. Let's go and rescue some of your mates, shall we? Sounds good. So Scott and Lucy are now heading 12 miles down the road to Chesterfield to meet another animal activist, Kitty. Hi! She's asked Scott to carry out health checks on a huge new batch of rescue hens that are due to arrive today. Hello, hi, I'm Scott, how are you? I'm Scott, I'm fine, thank you. I hear we're welcoming 40 little girls. It's actually more. We've managed to rescue 58. Wow. Right at the last minute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
they're here, the girls are arriving. It's such a perfect day for the hens to arrive. They've never seen the sun before, they've never felt the grass or been able to scratch around. So it's so perfect for them to come out on a day like this where the sun is shining and they can just have the best experience they can do and a really nice welcome into the real world. Hello, hello girls, hello. Well, they're certainly not looking anywhere near as healthy as yours, Lucy, are they? No, but they'll get there, they yeah. will. This is the first step towards their freedom. Absolutely. Hey. They're let's, out now. Let's start with liberation from the van, yes. shall we? Come on, girls. All these ex-cage hens were destined to be killed after they had stopped laying their daily quota of eggs. These girls shouldn't go to slaughter. They have the ability to live a natural life. And why shouldn't they? That's the lucky last of the girls. And someone's laid. Oh, oh really? Look. First freedom egg at your end of the crate there. Oh, nice. Oh, that's got a good ring to it, actually. Freedom egg. It's oh, a freedom egg. I like egg. it, yes. It Some certainly is. Free chickens. Free chickens and a first freedom egg. You can be brave. At Scott's St Margaret's practice, student nurse Jess is feeling on edge as her three-year-old Jack Russell Cross Poppy is prepared for surgery. Good girl. Joe, the vet on duty, is one of Jess's closest friends. There's definitely added pressure when the owner is right in front of you, because I know Poppy, and obviously Jess is worried about her, so I've got that added pressure. Oh, model patient. Mm -hmm. Joe's about to remove one of Poppy's front teeth, the collateral damage from a play fight with Joe's dog, Kimber. I think Jo is feeling a little bit guilty about Poppy's injury, but she has no need to be. They were just playing over the park and it was an accident. All right, Pops. Can I have a nap, eh? Every anaesthetic is risky. At university, we're taught that it's reversible death, which sounds pretty dramatic, but it is that balance of keeping the patient asleep so they don't feel the surgery, but not letting them get too deep. Oh, Poppy, you're very sensitive, aren't you? It is quite unusual being on a different side of things when it's your pet going under the anaesthetic. I'm a little bit stressed at the moment, just getting Poppy settled. So this one definitely needs to come out. There's a massive pocket there. So that would just get full of bacteria and should probably get an abscess there. Mm. So it would eventually fall out by itself, but it's much better that we take it out before she gets any pain. Sounds good. Nearly there. There we go. Yay. Just one tiny tooth. Yay. All right. Oh, Bobby. The tooth has come out easily, but with the surgery nearly complete, Poppy's heart rate suddenly drops. What's her heart rate? Poppy's heart has gone quite slow. It's dropped to about 20 beats per minute, which is really low for her. This could be quite dangerous. You OK? don't want anything bad to happen to her. So if we see the heart rate slowing down, then we need to lighten the anaesthetic just slightly to bring them back up and bring up their heart rate again. Am I just panicking? Just take a nice breath. Yeah. You OK? Thank you. Yeah. I'm hoping that we never have to do this again because it is a lot of stress for me as well as everyone else. OK, we're all done. Are you relieved, Jess, it's all over? Yeah, still a little bit tense until that tube comes out, I think, yeah. but yeah. No, I'm happy the worst part's over. Oh, there we go, we're waking up. Poppy! It is quite an insight to see how, you know, other people feel when they put their animal in for surgery and anaesthesia because it is quite a risky thing although we do take every precaution to make sure that nothing bad will happen. Hey. Oh, oh hello. little Poppy. Hi. This is Poppy. Just a little bit gappy. <laughs> Just the front one. Still beautiful. Very beautiful. Poppy will be getting a lot of TLC tonight. She might even get some treats. I think she deserves it. You are very brave. Kimmy wanted to see how her best friend's doing. Oh. She's very sorry about your tooth pops. <laughs> oh, don't feel guilty, Kimber. It's OK. They're very quiet, aren't they? Yeah. In Chesterfield, 160 miles north of London, yeah. 
Scott is getting his first look at dozens of rescued ex cage hens. And one of the common things is bumblefoot, which is the yeah. bacterial condition. They get through the injuries, and I assume they get the injuries because of the fact they're standing on cage wire. Yeah, it's all just the time. wire, yeah. All right, good girl. Scott is examining each hen to make okay. sure they're healthy enough to go to new homes. It's unlike Lucy's beautiful chickens at home. The comb is not only pale, but it's also flopping to one side. 15-year-old Lucy is part of a UK-wide campaign to rescue and rehome hens like these that have lived their entire lives indoors in cramped cages. It's incredible to think that this is the first sunlight that they've ever yeah. had on their little faces. Yeah. Marie is one of the volunteers for the local Phoenix Rescue Group, which stepped in to rehome this new batch of hens that were about to be killed. This is heartbreaking. I'm taking hen after hen out of the box and they're in such a bad way. Pale combs, feathers missing, emaciated. When you're feeling their breastbone, the keel bone here, hers is so sharp. Yeah. Oh. We need to feed you up, don't we? Yes, we do. There you go. Oh dear, you're a bit worse for wear, aren't you, sweetheart? Oh, that's a very bald bird, isn't it? Yeah, they get quite bored in the cages. Obviously, there's nothing for them to do. There's nowhere for them to scratch, to get out of the way of other girls. So they pluck feathers. Of course. And, you know, feathers. from themselves from and from themselves each other. And from each other, yes. To see these animals firsthand and to see the state that they're in, it is really upsetting. But I think it strengthens the resolve of people like Lucy and people like me to try and make the UK free of any egg that isn't laid happily and naturally in a normal environment. Last one, okay. Oh, There's your pedicure yeah. done. Yeah? Nice Come on, sweetheart. The good news today is that with proper nutrition and care, all 58 of these hens are going to enjoy a happy retirement. This is their new beginning. With a little bit of time to heal, these beautiful girls will be able to go off to their new loving forever homes. Oh, look at those, Georgie. Oh, lots of very nice chickens in here, or chops <laughs> as I like to call them. Already, five-year-old Georgie has arrived with her aunt Chrissy to take home six of the hens. Oh, who's that one? What should we call her? William. William? We can't call her William. <laughs> She's a girl. <laughs> what about Billy? Wilhelmina. Wilhelmina. <laughs> Seeing the hens being rehomed is probably the best moment of it. Don't tip my lovely chickens over, <laughs> mister. <laughs> I won't. Because that's when the hens are really on their way to their new life. And you know from that point on that that hen has a safe, secure future. And that's really brilliant to know. Bye. Bye. Well, that was a lovely end to a hard working day. I feel like my job is done. I better head back to London. Well, there was one more thing. Right. So after a very successful hen rescue, Lucy sent me off on, well, a fairly vague mission. She's mentioned about a cheeky meerkat at the alpaca farm that she lives nearby. So as I'm a fairly cheeky chappy myself, I'm quite keen to check him out and see if there's anything he needs for me to do. Let's go. Come on. Oh, it's okay. At the Royal Veterinary Let's College, go. Marie has arrived with her grumpy sphinx cat for Banu's appointment with cardiologist Ilaria Speller. Hello. Hello. Are you right? Yes, I'm Marie. I'm Ilaria. Nice to meet you. Who's who we have here today? Uh, this is Banu. Hello, Come Banu. Come to get her heart checked. Today. Banu needs That's to cool. be spayed to stop her sexual frustration and extreme mood swings. But recently, Scott diagnosed the one-year-old with a heart murmur. Thanks. So we are ready to go. Great. Please Thank come you. follow me. Today, a scan will determine if it's safe for surgery to go ahead. If Banu can't get spayed, it's going to be really stressful for the family and for Banu. But our main priority just now is the heart murmur and making sure that she's OK. Oh, I love you. <laughs> I know. It's all very scary, isn't it? Banu is a big part of our family. Everybody adores her and loves her, so to think there might be something seriously wrong with her is really scary. Okay, Banu, are you ready? Good girl. Good girl. 
Some cats have murmurs that are not related to any disease, and some other cats, unfortunately, have a murmur, and that may impact their life expectancy and long-term prognosis. Oh, no. We're sorry. True to her recent form with Scott, Banu is proving to be a handful for the medical oh, team conducting the it. scan. Yes. My nose! <laughs> I know, that's oh, called no. jelly. Oh, oh, dear. You tell us. Oh, I know. I feel really nervous. I've got butterflies, and I think that's just not knowing what Ilaria's going to tell me about uh, Banu's condition. Ilaria, how are we going? <laughs> what we found during the scan is that she's got a little hole in her heart. Okay. But the hole was sealed. So we went hunting for other causes of the murmur and we couldn't find any other. Okay. So the good news is that her murmur is not associated with any disease. So she doesn't need, you know, any surgery. treatment. Oh, she can go ahead with surgery. She can be spayed. There is no evidence of any abnormalities, and that is really good news. She's got normal life expectancy, no problems at all. We consider her heart to be normal. I'm so relieved yeah. that her heart is fine because we love her so much. I just can't imagine anything bad happening to her, and now we can get her spayed, which is amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll give you lots of cuddles tonight. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Oh. With the all clear, Banu will now be booked in for surgery with Scott as soon as possible. This is the best news that I've had all week. We've been so worried and it is such a relief and I just feel less stressed already. Come on, let's get you home. Get you lots of treats. Come on. In Sheffield, South Yorkshire, Scott's been asked to take a detour before he heads home. He's about to investigate an unusual case at the Mayfield Animal Park. Hi there, hi, I'm Scott the Vet. Uh, Lucy sent me, apparently you've got a mischievous meerkat. Nice to meet you, I'm Andy, this is Sooty. Hello Sooty, well you don't look like you're misbehaving. He's not the issue, he's got an older brother that is causing lots of issues. Okay, sounds ominous. We'll head inside and we'll see the family group. Okay, all right, lead the way. We've got a problem with one of our male meerkats. He's reaching maturity and he's causing a little bit of trouble within the social group. So we need him to sort of come up with a plan of how we can change that and alter that so they can live harmoniously. So this is our family group. They're not as friendly, shall we say, as uh, little Sutty that you've met. Not as friendly? They look very cute and sweet. They don't look like they'll be a problem at all. Keep your fingers close. Your right. Body. Yeah. Protect this area. Your area. jugular. Oh, and this come area. Off it. Yeah. The work of the team. Yeah, you'll see it. <laughs> the meerkats are very tenacious. They are very inquisitive. And unfortunately, with intelligence comes aggression. The only adolescent male in the group, Naguvu, has been terrorizing his female family members. We've got one young man, and he's coming to his own. And right. When I say coming to his own, um, he's reaching sexual maturity in the fact that uh, everything, like a teenage boy, um, <laughs> it's fascinating him in terms of female right. form. We're, but the problem is... We're the talking people, ages, are we? We certainly are. Right. But the only female forms in this group are his sisters or his mum, so we've got an issue. Ooh. Oh, dear. Yeah. Obviously, it's completely inappropriate for him to have sexual behaviours towards his family members because inbreeding is a problem. But also, for the poor boy, he's sexually frustrated. He is annoyed. He's therefore prone to more fighting. Uh, and that also isn't great for his health. So hopefully, we'll find something that we can do to calm his uh, urges. In dogs and cats, we would consider neutering them, castrating them to remove their testicles. Yep. But I can imagine that these guys are really quite dexterous with their feet. Quite right, yeah. And they clean each other as well. Yeah, there's a lot of mutual grooming goes on. So, mm, that so might be quite stitches difficult. as we close a wound is going to be quite difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Really, what we need to do then is to, I think, look to some kind of drug, uh, a chemical castration, something that will actually mop up all the testosterone. 
there's an implant that we can use. Pop it under his skin, it'll have about a 12 month action and you know, that might just fix the problem. Excellent. This implant will temporarily cool down Naguvu's urges, but will not affect his long-term ability to breed. It's a hormonal implant that gives a slow release of a drug that helps to dampen down the production of testosterone, the male hormone that stimulates sexual urges, and hopefully by reducing that down, it'll calm down Naguvu and he'll be a much better behaved son and brother. Excellent. The male part of me feels uh, it's not quite right, but... <laughs> well, you know why? Yeah, the keeper part of me does. Yeah. <laughs> well, particularly as this drug is going to make him shrink. So um, that's, um, that's a horrifying thought for any man. Yeah, he's quite right, quite right. Yeah. Hopefully, it won't affect him too drastically. The implant is not physically taking away the testes. It will eventually come back. So it's a sort of temporary fix for a long-term problem. And in the end of the day, it's the best thing for the animal. So that's all that's important, really. But even for Keeper Andy, it's hard to tell one meerkat from another. I think the issue you're going to have is trying to find him amongst all these meerkats. Yeah, they all seem to look exactly the same. <laughs> you should be more worried about the attitude of the meerkats once he's started doing the restraint. Those gloves are needed and he'll find out why. So you're going to show me how it's done? I'm going to stand back. I do this a lot. I'm going to let you have a go first. Wow, thanks, mate. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Confidence is key with meerkats. They're very confident, so you need to be very confident. Keep your fair fingers away from them. Come on, Guru. Which one are you, mate? It's going to be a guess, isn't it? This one's going to be... Oh, so close. And don't get too cocky. Ow! Ow! Oh, man, he's got some teeth! Oh, my goodness, quick. <laughs> In Sheffield, Scott is trying to catch naughty meerkat Naguvu. But identifying exactly which one is the adolescent boy is going to be a challenge. Just one thing I'll warn you about at this point is that when they're scared, they suck their testicles back into the body. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> right, four to go. When Scott finally does track you. down Naguvu, the right, young male going. needs to be chemically castrated to stop his inappropriate advances to the female members of his family. Not only are the meerkats lightning fast, but when you catch them, they're not impressed. All right. Ah, you. So I'm so glad I listened to Andy when he said, put the gloves on. You've got a little girl there. She is, I tell you what, I'm you not doing well, am I? You are, you are, you're getting there, you're getting there. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's not much luck, and none of them are the ones we want. They're so fast, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I think Nigu is realising what's coming, so he's trying to avoid it. <laughs> oh, no. no. It takes no, several nearly. attempts oh, before man, Scott finally tea. gets his man. Oh, there we go, there we go. OK, let's see. <laughs> All right, mate. So we've got the testicles there, which is great. You're very healthy, you're very strong. And Guru is showing extreme signs of aggression. You can see that it takes two of us to restrain the animal, and it shows how much testosterone is pumping through that little system of his. OK, I'm just going to take my gloves off to put the implant together. Even with Andy holding on to the angry meerkat, it's not going to be easy for Scott to administer the implant. Please don't get me. Oh, I won't, mate. I won't. <laughs> The implant is going to just add a slow release chemical into his body, which will just depress his testosterone production and hopefully give a nice calm and serene feel to the new Nguvu. Good, I can feel that. Good lads. Do we both be angry as well, mate? I think that positive relationship's gone. Yeah, he's not gonna have a beer down the pub with me now, <laughs> is he? Not at all, not at all. Every owner of every animal, whenever we perform a procedure as a vet, they have some sort of follow-up monitoring that they need to do at home. Andy's, it's a bit interesting. It's not something I've asked for before, but I really do need him to take consistent photos of Nguvu's testicles. That, that's all right, yeah. It's yeah. so bizarre, I can't actually believe I'm asking it, but... <laughs> if we can see his testicles shrinking, yeah. we know the drug is working. Okay. And as they start to increase in size again, we yeah. know he needs the injection again. But fingers crossed, it won't be for 12 months. Right. Leave your sister and your mum alone. <laughs> All right. There we go. Normally, I find that animals quite like me, but up here in Yorkshire, the chickens poo on me and the meerkats bite me. So I just hope next time round when I come back to Sheffield that the animals don't uh, take another chunk out of me.
It's a day off for one of the practice's vet nurses, Gemma. What do you think of the black lace, Fred? I think it's going to look really nice. It's very glamorous for Kimby's. She's at home finishing off an important present. Oh, she's going to look so pretty on her birthday. A former fashion designer, Gemma's sewing a harness for Kimber. The she's rescue dog sleep, that recently Kimber. disgraced herself yeah, when she unwittingly later. caused her doggy hey. pal Poppy to lose a tooth. Oh, don't feel guilty, Kimber. It's OK. It's Kimber's only transgression, since her owner Joe rescued her overseas and brought her back home to London. Jo was doing work placement when she was doing veterinary training in Cyprus. And I think it was even on her first day, someone dumped Kimber on the doorstep. She was a tiny little puppy, these massive ears, really cute. And Jo completely fell in love. That was four years ago. And this year, Gemma's helping to organise a special party to celebrate the anniversary of Kimber's adoption. You like Kimber, don't you? She's your girlfriend, Fred. We'll see you at the party. It's going to be a really, really nice time. And I think uh, Joe's going to love it. What do you think, Fred? Do you think Kimber's going to like it? I think she's going to look beautiful in this. Look nice on you, actually. Maybe we'll make you one, too. Hey, Marie, how are you? Good. First of all, Good. hug for great news. Oh. Marie and Banu are back at the St Margaret's practice after the one-year-old Sphinx cat was cleared of a serious heart condition. Well, we're not completely out of the woods because obviously today we are going to have to spay her and try and reduce her um, sex pestering ways. <laughs> <laughs> the moody little miss can finally have the operation she needs to get her raging hormones under control. We're just hoping from the operation that she can be her usual happy self that she is nine times out of ten. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> she wow. Beautiful jump. Well, you know, we're coming into um, colder times now. Yes, oh. Mummy needs to get a matching one. <sighs> Banu comes out of the cage and is wearing a lovely knit jumper, of which Marie is very proud of. Knit jumpers on a sphinx cat. You know, OK. <laughs> Are we being serious with this? I mean, Bani, you look ridiculous. What's wrong? <laughs> she looks gorgeous. Ooh, wow, she is loving me today. Hi. It was because I mentioned your fashion. You never comment on a lady's never clothing. Never dis fashion. All fashion jokes aside, it is a serious day for this little lady. Now we just need to get you through this and hopefully you'll be a bit less cantankerous. Could you try? No. That's the answer. A resolute no. No. All right. Do you want to say goodbye to Mummy? Oh, goodbye. Oh, I know. I love you. Banu is part of our family. She's like our fourth child. Everybody just adores her and loves her. I'll see you after. Be good. Well, OK. Bye. Bye, I'll See you later. Bye. Bye. See you, Marie. So obviously we're going to be worried about her today going under anaesthetic, but I know that she's in really, really good hands with Scott. Come on then, Chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jess. Hello. Oh, oh my goodness. Hello. Yeah. Very, very happy customer. I'm just hopeful that because you don't look dissimilar to her mum, that she might like you a little bit more than she likes me. Hey. Hey. It's OK. But Banu soon makes it clear that Jess is not going to placate her. Whoa. Wowza. Right, so... Because she is so mad and so stressed, rather than trying to give her an injection, I think it's best we just give her some gas, uh, calm her down nicely, and then we can move forward with the spay. All right, so we're ready. Well done. Good girl. Even though we have proven that her heart is OK, I still think she is as a patient that we want to watch very closely. Oh, well, that's better. That's the one. OK. 
cat so she can just flop over there. Banu is finally under, but it's not long before Scott is feeling even more pressure. She's just not breathing right now. Sometimes they just go down quite deeply, and although the anaesthetic was given very, very gently, Banu has stopped breathing, and it's an emergency situation right there. Come on. She's not breathing right now, so we just need to encourage her to do so. Good girl. At the St Margaret's practice, it's a tense moment for Scott and Jess. Come on, sweetheart. Banu has stopped breathing after being anaesthetised. Is that her? Is that her? Yeah. There, yeah. and again. Yay! Good girl. OK. <laughs> Yet again, Banu, you are trouble. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's much better. So Banu decided that she wasn't going to breathe for a little bit longer than is comfortable. So I think she just wanted me to sweat a bit. <laughs> so. Did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know there's problems when Jess and I aren't saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> when it's gone quiet, that's when, when it's you got know quiet, then you know there's something. Yeah, yeah, OK. I wonder if it's because I was mean to her about a jumper. I was going to say, do you want to keep that on and we just tuck it up? Just as long as you breathe, I don't care what you wear. Just, there we go. Breathing is Girl. good. Jumper optional. <laughs> With Banu now stable, the spaying of the highly strung Sphinx cat can safely begin. All good up this end, Scott. Yep, happy. OK, so just about to cut. The surgery involves removing both Banu's ovaries and much of her uterus. So although this is a fairly routine procedure, I think for this cat it's going to make a huge difference to her quality of life. This is a very hormonal, very stressed lady and removing the factory for the hormones, the ovaries, is going to make all the difference in her life. There's one ovary there and you can see it's very active and that this cat is a very hormonal girl right now. I have to be careful what I say. I'm surrounded by women, so yeah, I can't say anything bad. Yeah. Jess, we're all done. She can wake up. Lovely. Right. Don't know if she'll like me anymore before or after the surgery. It's so hard to tell. We'll see. <laughs> I'm really happy that Banu has come through the anaesthetic. Initially, a little bit of a scare for us, but she's come through perfectly fine and she's going to recover from this and hopefully enjoy a hormone free life. Upstairs, Ona Marie is anxiously waiting for Banu to wake up. I'm really excited to get her back and give her some cuddles and give her some TLC um, and know that she's okay. Right, let's see how much happy you are after that spay. Ooh, maybe not so much. Hey. Although her reproductive organs have been removed, it will still take several weeks for Banu's hormone levels to settle down. Come on. Goodness. Wow. What was all that about? I must say I'm a little shocked at how Banu has behaved towards me. I'm hoping it's just hormones. And given a few weeks, once they've calmed down, I can go and see her at home and she'll give me a cuddle. Fingers crossed. Hi, Marie. He's your little treasure. Oh! <laughs> Hello, baby. What have they been doing? I know you're going to be so angry with me. Do you want to come and see Mommy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. She is she wholeheartedly is. unimpressed. I know. With me. Oh, I know. It's okay. It feels really good to get Banu back. I've been worried all day about her, and just to see that she's OK is brilliant. Well, thank you so much for looking after her. It's been um, a pleasure. Oh, oh, has it been? <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly not been a pleasure for her, I can tell you that much. Hopefully you'll meet her when she's a bit nicer. No frowning. Too young for Botox. <laughs> Keep your face calm. Doesn't this cake look great? 
Also in St Margaret's, receptionist Elle is holding a special party at her house. So not an H in the packet? No! Happy birthday. Kimber won't mind. She won't mind. I don't think she can spell, so I think it won't. <laughs> Elle, Gemma and Jess so are waiting for their workmate no. Joe to arrive with the guest of honour, Kimber. Oh, we everything's get? ready. Doggies are ready for yeah. their cake. Doggies are ready. Are you ready oh, for your treat? Oh, oh Kimmy's here. Let me touch your birthday. It's been four years since Joe rescued Kimber in Cyprus. Look, it's got you on it. Kimmy's, oh, it's that's you. Oh, so sweet. Having a dog has completely changed my life, and Kimber is so special. Everybody loves her. Yeah. And it's so nice to be able to have that bond with a dog. It makes me a better vet. I can sympathise and empathise with my clients. I really can relate to them. What's this? Let me help you open it. Everyone wants to see what it is. <laughs> and now it's time for Kimber to inspect Gemma's surprise present. Do you like it? Oh, that's so sweet. Should we put it on you? You look so beautiful. You're sparkling. Thank you so much, Gemma. You're welcome. It's beautiful, isn't it, Kimbies? It's Aww. nice and glamorous. It's very glamorous, and she's very glamorous. I'm so lucky. I work with a really amazing group of people. Everyone's got their own pets, and we really bond over the fact that we all love our pets to bits. Bye bye. Yay! Yay! It's so sweet to have a party to mark Kimber's adoption. I mean, it's a bit of a weird, bonkers thing to do, isn't it? But I'm sure we're not the only people having a party for our dogs. Happy adoption day, Kimbies! Ooh, what is that? I think it's safe to say that the adoption party has been a big success. Oh, she likes that. Good girl. See how happy she is, Jude. Yeah. And one week after being spayed, Sphinx cat Banu finally appears to have calmed down. Ooh, is that nice? Is that That's a nice? good spot there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh dear, you are really in a mood today, aren't you? Dear me. Prior to her operation, the feisty feline was consumed with hormone-induced frustration. <laughs> oh. Hey. I love you. I hate you. <laughs> All right, baby girl. Now she's a picture of serenity, giving cuddles to her owner Marie and her son Jude. Good girl, Banu. We are so happy to have Banu home. Her recovery has been fantastic, and she's calmer already. I know Scott said it would be a few weeks, but there's definitely a difference in her behaviour already. But the big test is whether Banu will finally relent and give a warm welcome to Scott. Hey, Marie, Hello, how are you? Hello, Scott. Good, how are you? Really well, really well, nice thanks. Nice to see you. Do you want to come Trust in? Trust you, well, I'll see. <laughs> how do you feel things have gone? Do you feel like it's made a big difference? It's made a really big difference. Already she's calmer. It's like she's happier. Like, we've released her from the burden of, of hormones. Of hormones. And yeah. she's like, Ah, oh, I'm so much better. And now the big test is to see if actually she is a bit more, well, nice to me. Can I sort of stroke you a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Banu is reacting the way Banu does. She hates me. Oh, yeah, pound of flesh and all that. Oh. oh. I think she really is unimpressed about my presence in her house and in her life generally, but I'm really happy to report that it seems like her life has got much better in the presence of Marie and the family. Oh, hello. Oh, well, that's an improvement. And you're going to launch. Oh, wow. I feel honoured. Oh, that was progress. <laughs> that was progress, that was, yeah. That was big progress. Yeah, yeah, I can touch her without her savaging yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs>